Seismic charges. Stand by. Hello everyone, welcome to the Star Wars Archives, where you will well and truly find the archives are complete. Have you ever found yourself watching one of the nine Star Wars films and come across a character that just makes you consider why you even support the Jedi and Rebels? I mean, of course, as human beings, we naturally want to see good triumph and morality restored. But there are some individuals within the galaxy who make me question who really are the good guys and if I should actually be supporting the Empire. Who are these people and why are they making me question my allegiance? Well, without further ado, let's jump right into another neglected lore topic not widely talked about among Star Wars there are. Firstly, we have Emilian Hodo, who was a politician, military commander, and freedom fighter serving in both the Alliance to Restore the Republic and Resistance. In the early days of the First Order slash Resistance War, Hodo became the commanding officer of the Resistance fleet. Okay, so she looks friendly enough, well, aside from that purple hair and arrogant smirk. Despite Hodo's high rank within the Resistance, a position I'm sure many could only dream of having, she consistently shows all the condescending traits of a toxic leader. It's a very limited amount of time that we can stay out of range of those Star Destroyers. Very kind of you to make me aware. Let's give me those And we need to shake them before we can find a new base, so what's our plan? Our plan, Captain? Not Commander, right? Wasn't it Leia's last official act to demote you for your dreadnought plan? She continuously mistakes rational questions from other male members of the Resistance as attacks on her position as a female in leadership. She does this beyond all rationality by refusing to divulge any information on her plans and making snide comments that she mistakes as strides for female empowerment. Your ultimate purpose as a leader is to communicate. And when Poe asks what's the plan, and you are self-consumed enough not to answer it, you instantly fail as a leader. She is a liability to the Resistance, and is consumed by her own narcissistic tendencies. The next character that makes me want to pledge millions of galactic credits to another Death Star construction is none other than Seo Bebu, who prominently featured in Episode 1. From his pesky whining... Negotiation. We've lost all communications. And where are the Chancellor's ambassadors? To his blunt, ungrateful comments to highly regarded Jedi... Your negotiations seem to have failed, Ambassador. To his defeatist attitude... <laughs> The death toll is catastrophic. We must bow to their wishes. Or the way to his poor manners. You must contact me. Co Bebel is rude, condescending, and doesn't have a rational, well-reasoned bone in his body. He always thinks he's the only one in the room and has zero people-person skills. How did a highly educated University of Theed alumni become so rude? He really does make me question who the Dark Lord of the Senate really is. The next character who makes me want to grant emergency powers to Supreme Chancellor Palpatine is this lady here. And don't worry if you don't know her name, I'll tell you, Lama Di Essi. But knowing that really couldn't matter less because she is the most insignificant and infuriating individual. She has zero likability and it feels like she's been plucked straight out of the cast of Coronation Street. Oh, something's happened. Finn. Just can't wait. Mm. We've got to see the general. She's gone. She is overly pretentious, overly emotional, and an absolute sycophant who greases up to hold her to steamroll an irrelevant feminist revolution within a much wider, actually important revolution to destroy the Empire. You know, these women actually are more consumed with their feminist agendas than they are with bringing peace to the galaxy. Shumai from the Commerce Guild is more likable and worthy of my support. And the next character who makes me want to get a job at a Camino cloning factory to help install microchips for certain executives that I will not elaborate in detail on oh, is none other than Omega from the recent Bad Batch Hello. series, with which I didn't make it past What's the first that? episode thanks to that girl whose name is two letters away from spelling oh. Omegle. Seriously, Disney, why are you, are you always ruining potentially good plots with annoying characters oh, just there yeah. to tick boxes? You're angry. How perceptive. I know what you're going to do. Now, I don't want to be rude to the voice actress, but the delivery of dialogue is just not on point. It sounds forced, unrehearsed, and emotionless. I really don't know what it is that makes me feel so uneasy when I listen to the voice acting. 
Either we get Wattain Boar in as a replacement, that would just be marvelous. Like seriously, I'd rather listen to a two hour Shakespearean monologue from Wattain Boar than have to sit through the rest of the Bad Batch series. Additionally, Omegle's character does not feel Star Wars-esque at all. She is repetitious, messing things up all the time, and then someone always has to come in and save her at the last minute. She is boring, cringe, and unlikable. Dave Filoni, what are you doing to Star Wars at the moment? My last notable mention goes to Rey Skywalker, who is always throwing fits and proving herself to be the most powerful Jedi who has ever lived, despite having next to no training. She can force pull heavy vehicles of a colossal scale, accidentally emit force lightning of catastrophic proportions, destroy the greatest ever Sith with the slightest of ease, and basically just excels at everything and puts everyone to shame in everything she does, altering all aspects of the Force, well because she can, and Disney doesn't care about the six films prior to their abysmal fan fictions. A character who can do everything is absolutely worthless as a character. She's the byproduct of politics, and for that reason, great efforts must be made to ensure that all attempts by rebel forces to fight the Empire must be thwarted. And now for some there additional mentions. Rose I Tico. You. Tell me. That's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. Al337. You couldn't get from here to Black Spire without me. Now you're gonna make the castle run? She's definitely going. Oh, why? Because you're my organic overlord? Princess Leia, a sequel version, for this gravity defying cringe. And Cara Dune. Job anyway. You take out the head imp, the rest will run like rats. I know it seems like female characters are overrepresented in this list, but you can thank Disney for that. There are so many amazing female characters throughout Star Wars from Shark T, Luminera, Ahsoka, Ayla Secura, Princess Leia, prequel version, and the list could really go on. Disney, take note from George Lucas, seriously. So there you have it. Good guys from the Star Wars galaxy that make me want to support the cause of the Empire. Individuals who allow the Sith to make convincing arguments as to why they should be in control of the galaxy. So what do you guys think? Do you agree with my choices? Or am I just a sexist prequel zealot? Let me know what you think in the comment section below, and I shall see you all in the next video. And remember, be happy. We lost the transmission, sir.